All right, in this video, I wanted to show you the new Vercel AI SDK as well as their AI Playground. So right off the bat, before getting into their SDK, I do want to show their AI Playground, which I think is a phenomenal execution of a product. So what this is here is it gives you the ability to compare the LLMs side by side. So just to demonstrate this, you can select a handful of these different models. There's some that are behind the pro model. There's some that you will need to log in for like these anthropic models, but then you can add or remove models and then also sync the chat. So if I just go ahead here and I say, hello world, send here you'll see that all of a sudden I get both of the responses from two separate LLMs within one screen, right? So you can imagine how this would be helpful with say you're developing an application or thinking of an application to develop and you want to try and figure out which LLM might be best for the use case is this gives you a nice interface with quite a few LLMs already integrated. So there's LLMs from Hugging Face to the Anthropic LLMs to obviously OpenAI and a handful of others. So this gives you a really nice environment really just to play around with what type of responses you get or maybe if it's a, an open source model a hugging face model where you you don't necessarily need something like chat you know or gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 you can really see here which one accomplishes the task for you so if i just say uh, demonstrate what you can do Obviously, you can get a lot more creative with your prompts here. I encourage you to go to this uh, SDK and check it out. So if you just go to sdk.vercel.ai, you can see uh, this this interface here. Now within here, there's also a prompt. So say if you're uh, within the realm of prompt engineering or really trying to refine a good prompt. So a similar experience here, you can add or remove models and see side by side how those models handle uh, the the prompts themselves. So sort of similar, just sort of a different look on the, the interface here. So the other thing to note with this is it's very new. So you saw a little error come up there. Uh, I was just on with uh, Jared on Twitter here, uh, going back and forth on a versioning issue that I had. I wanna give huge a huge shout out to Jared and team. They resolved the issue within minutes um, and I was able to get up and running to get this video going. So the other thing to note with the Vercel AI SDK is there's a huge emphasis on streaming. So streaming UI is what you can think of as the chat GPT like interface. So as you're getting that response back, it streams it to the screen for you. So, you know, word by word, or if it's code, you know, piece of code by piece of code, rather than waiting for that entire response to load and then show it here. So you see sort of an example here of the issue that they're trying to solve. So within the documentation here, there is a bit of a technical explanation here if you're interested in what they're doing and sort of why they're doing it. And I encourage you really just to check out their documentations as a whole. They're great from what I've seen. Uh, I haven't gone through everything quite yet. This is really more of a first look at this as it did just come out yesterday. So some of the integrations within the AI SDK, if I just pull them up here, and if I just search examples, you can see within there, I believe it's here, this link. So within here, you can see some of the features that are built in. So it's compatible with their edge network. So it allows you to scale these and deploy these really quickly to you know a fast uh, environment. Uh, there's built-in adapters for Hugging Face, OpenAI, Anthropic, and Langchain, which is great. Uh, so the streaming first, I think this is really huge. You know, this will prevent 
I think a lot of hiccups and just friction of developers trying to build their own solution for this, having this within a uh, package that you can just install and have streaming ready out of the gate, I think is huge. You know, it saves a lot of effort and, uh, you know, potential, you know, sort of technical complications with trying to roll this solution by yourself. So some of the templates and examples that are within the repo, you have a Next.js Svelte, um, different integrations. So one with OpenAI, one with Hugging Face, one with Langchain. And I did see somewhere that they are going to be supporting uh, new frameworks as they go with this. So this is just the first rollout of this. And I expect there to be a lot more features uh, within this. So some of the notable features as well are these hooks that they have built in, use chat and use completion. I will be pulling down in just a second their repo to show you how easy it is to get up and running with this. So yeah, I encourage you read through the blog post, check out their documentation. And if you're like me and you learn best by really just diving into the code, head on over to their GitHub repository and pull this down. So one thing to note with their uh, SDK is they were able to secure the AI namespace, if we call it that, or whatever it is from NPM, where you, they can, or you can rather, NPM install AI. And that's their package. So pretty great. And I think they will get a lot of traction even just from that aspect alone. I mean, it goes without saying it's very helpful and useful, but pretty neat, just sort of an aside that they're, they are able to secure this. So once you're on their GitHub repo page, you can either um, go to the examples themselves and look up the example that you're trying to start with. So say you have a next uh, application, you can go through, look at the readme, and then you can execute uh, this command within your terminal to get started. Or you could go back to the root of the repository pull this all down and you can just get clone from your VS code. So that's what I'm going to be showing you here. So just so it, you know, if you wanted to try out a handful of these examples. So if we get clone, pull down that repo, you'll see we have this AI directory, we can go into examples, and then these are the ones that we have, like we just saw. So if we just CD, AI examples, and then let's just say next open AI. Okay, so once we're within this directory, you can go ahead and install. And the one thing that you will have to do is once you have this directory, go in here and just remove example from your environment variable. And then you'll have to reach out to OpenAI to get that. All right, so once you have your API key, go ahead and put it in your .env.local, just paste it in here after the equal sign, and then go ahead and save and close that out. So once you have that all set up, you can just simply go npm run dev, and then you can open this up in your browser here. So if we just click, I'll close that one out. And I'll just put this off to the side just to see if we have any errors. I don't see any errors in our terminal. And if I just go, hello world, you can see there's that streaming response. So tell me a story that is relatively long. So just to sort of demonstrate the streaming aspect of it. So you can see this is a really quick way to get up and running with a chatbot. So say if you want to have a chatbot or even just a chat interface of sorts, uh, this gives you a way that you can get up and running within Next.js or the other examples that they have. So this is an open AI example, but as you see here, there's Langchain, a Hugging Face, there's a Nuxt implementation, there's this felt kit. Um, there's a handful of things in here that you can play around with. So really quick to get off and running. So really phenomenal work by the team at Vercel in getting this uh, up here for all of us to use. 
So a couple other things just to note. So within their AI SDK, another nice feature is you can get code for the model and it does give you the ability to have a drop down here with a number of selections so if you want to use svelkit or just the node.js code uh, you can go in here and select it here so when i was looking at this off the bat i did notice some variances for things just to look out for with you know the, some of the examples are a little bit different than one another i'm trying to think of one that may be able to demonstrate that but just to be mindful this just came out yesterday so any sort of issues or rough edges um, just let them know they're really great really responsive team and i have no doubt that any issues that come up as they get surfaced they'll get resolved pretty quickly so you can go in here copy the code and you'll sort of have examples for whatever model you want to interact with so say uh, instead of the OpenAI example, you want to play around with Claude. If you're able to get an API key, you can go over to Claude. And then there's your example code for next. Here's the example code for Node.js. So you can really see how easy this is for a developer to come in here, get sort of boilerplate and just get up and running. Um, you don't have to worry about how to handle the streaming of responses. You can just handle sort of the business logic and all the other facets of your application. Now, one thing that I haven't checked out yet, but I am excited for is the Langchain implementation. Because if you haven't used Langchain yet, I really encourage you to use that. There is so much within the Langchain ecosystem where you can develop upon these LLM models and really build some cool things, whether it's agents or things similar to auto GPT of say if there's a particular task you want it to accomplish and you can run through this. There's support now for the OpenAI functions, which that's sort of a whole other level on how you can have sort of that computational exe execution to handle some of the uh, drawbacks within an LLM. So for instance, like if you want up-to-date information, you can use function calls for that. Or say if you want to do uh, particular calculations that the LLM doesn't handle well, you can use uh, the function calling feature for that. So a ton of stuff to play around with. I think this solves a huge pain point within the development of applications. So I'm definitely gonna be using this a whole lot more. I'll be going into more examples using this in future videos. So as always, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and otherwise, until the next one.